right, so who loves the Lord tonight? All right. I am not a preacher. Preachers do it real long, like Sister Shirley, uh, Brent, and, and Steve and Yandel. No, I'm just playing, Sister. Don't get offended, okay? Read the book, Unoffendable. Um, <laughs> I'm just playing. Anyway, who remembers the last time I spoke, uh, what we spoke about? Boy, that was really a, that was a good one, wasn't it? Actually, we spoke about raising a hallelujah. Remember, we were going for the dead end. Uh, I saw a dead end sign, and, and uh, the Lord spoke to me, and then uh, I said, I was, I was, actually, I spoke to the Lord and said, that's the dead end. <laughs> yeah, I said, you got that right, Lord. It is a dead end. Well, he uh, started work on me on that, and uh, we were supposed to not just uh, allow the, the dead ends in our life to uh, uh, just derail us and make us have uh, problems, but we're supposed to raise a hallelujah. We're supposed to praise the Lord through the troubles. Man, and, and, and listening to pastors preach, listen, I was back here in the back this morning, and I was working, but I could hear some of the message. Well, when I can't hear it real good, I turn on my phone on the, on the uh, uh, Facebook app, and I start listening until I get a phone call, then, then it kicks off, but I was sitting there, and I, and, and I was listening to pastor's message. I said, I, got, I need to hear this. While I was working, typing on my computer, and I need to hear this. And every time I, I said that, it, that sucker would knock off. It would, it, would just, it would just quit. And I said, Lord, I want to hear this message. And so I turned the sucker back on. Why am I saying sucker a lot? I don't know. I have no idea. But anyway, I turned the phone back on. And uh, as soon as I turn it on, then it would go a little bit, and then it would stop. Maybe it's the Internet. Maybe it's my phone I've dropped 400 times. I don't know what it was, but I was not supposed to be listening to the message this morning. And it sounds like a lot of what he talked about was what I'm going to talk about tonight and what Sister Shirley talked about Wednesday night that I had this a long time ago and what Brent said today. It's just everything ties together because God's trying to get his church ready. He's trying to get his bride ready. And to be able to have uh, everlasting uh, length, have the endurance to, to continue to move to where we need to go. But we raise a hallelujah. We got, to, we got to do the things that God wants us to do in praise and worship. And we got to uh, uh, do those things. So um, in, in leadership prayer this morning, Pastor mentioned um, that we turn it to him when we allow him. To do the, uh, let the things unfold, even through our problems and through our situations, and and we do it. His, we let him do it his way. Well, I, I, there's uh, so many things that happen in all of our lives, and I'm going to get to a point here in just a second. But the Lord wants me to talk about, and and it's it's not it's not mind blowing. It's something that we probably every one of us know, but it's stuff that that the Lord wanted me to say. We uh, y'all remember when I did speak the last time? I think Tabby, we talked about. Uh, we had taken, it had been over a year since we, we couldn't sell our house and didn't sell our house. And, and then Tabitha come along and she was the super girl. And, and within a month, she had sold my house for me. So she's awesome. If you need a realtor, that's the one right there. <laughs> Tabby McConnell. <laughs> well, we sold the house and guess what? We found land, we bought it. Five acres. It was amazing. Rocky was going to build me a dream home. Yeah. Well, the dream home uh, in one month, Rocky, I hope these numbers are right, from April 1st to May 15th, the lumber alone that we needed escalated $17,500 just for the lumber alone. We decided not to build. So uh, at that point, we said, wow. Wow. That's crazy. All right, we'll sell the land. We'll buy a house. We sold the land within a few months. Tabitha, again, sold our land for us and uh, got our asking price for it and been looking for a house, and now we can't find one. And I'm thinking, God, what are you doing to us? He says, hold on. <laughs> he says, hold on. And uh, I believe that uh, some setbacks are for, is what God wants in our lives. Some setbacks are things that uh, maybe he didn't ordain, but he allowed. And that's something that uh, we need to remember in our lives that there's always something next. So we raise a hallelujah. After that, what do we do? What's next? How do we continue when the new has worn off? 
I think about new Christians, and I think about uh, all these new faces that we have come in our church, and we're blessed, guys. We do keep a lot of new Christians. We do keep a lot of new converts in our, in our services. I think a lot of that's due to uh, Thursday night uh, recovery. I think a lot of that is due to that. I think a lot of it's due because you love them. And you, you take care of them and you, you talk to them. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess something. I went up to a couple on Wednesday night that had been coming a year and got their names. Is that not horrible? That's terrible. And I think that's, that's just, that's flunk. That's an F. I flunked. But I'm going to do better. We all have to do better. We got to keep them. But I think another reason why that sometimes new Christians don't stay in church is because uh, they fall in love with Christ. Or they don't fall in love with Christ. They get infatuated with him on the goosebumps and the feelings and the things that when they come to the altar, it feels great. And everybody tells you everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to work out. And then, and then troubles come, just like Pastor preached, uh, Shirley had preached, Brent said, uh, Dana actually read the scripture a while ago, and and it all fits together, and we forget the things that, that are supposed to happen, life, reality, things that, actually, that every day happen. But we have to move forward. We've got to keep going straight and never look back. I actually have a video. Or it's not a video. It's a, it's a song. It's a short song. I think it's a minute, 60-something seconds. I want you to listen to this song real quick and really listen to this song. This will uh, hit you right between the eyes, okay? Go ahead, Magoo. Oh, the poor little squirrel crossing the so hard to figure out the traffic pattern the poor little squirrel keeps changing his mind he's halfway across the street and then he says oh my god I'm not sure I want to finish crossing the street and then he runs back to his side of the street but halfway back to his side of the street he decides to go back to the other side of the street and he does not know what to do and the cars keep getting closer and closer and closer to him the poor little squirrel poor little squirrel the poor little squirrel he keeps changing he keeps on changing his mind keeps changing he keeps on changing his mind and I hope that he makes the right decision. Poor little squirrel. Poor, 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 poor little squirrel. Okay, that was not me singing, but. It could have been. <laughs> that poor little squirrel. How many of you have been driving down the road and this crazy squirrel runs out in front of you and he'll get three-thirds, almost three, what is almost three-thirds? <laughs> okay. He'll get three-fourths of the way over to past the road all right three fourths three quarters he'll get almost all the way and he'll turn around and try to go back and most of the time he don't make it no he just don't he just he don't make it he goes back to familiarity Shirley can say that word for me I can't say that word but what's familiar he'll turn around and go right back what's familiar to him Instead of going three more feet and making it across the road. He can see ahead of him. He can see what's there. But instead, he'll turn around and go back the other way. 
sometimes that's our problem sometimes. And even as older Christians, we, we, we get scared of what's the unknown, the things that we, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And you know what? I don't want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. I want to know what's going to, I know what's going to happen because I know God's got me. He says he's got me. And if I allow him to lead me and guide me and, and, and I, got, I, I step in his footsteps, everything's going to work out for the better. But if we just keep on going and, and, and allow, allow God to lead us, it'll happen. I, I didn't have this in my notes, but I, I think a snake's smarter than, than a squirrel. But you can run over that sucker and he'll still get to the other side. I mean, he'll still make the ditch. That's the way things happen. We live off of, I said a while ago, we live off infatuation instead of um, a loving God. And we forget to get to know him personally. A quick little story. I, I was in um, uh, Alma, Arkansas a few weeks back, and I was running late. And uh, I might have told this story, um, but uh, I was running a little bit late, um, uh, accounts. If you don't know, I go around to accounts, and I get orders, I place orders, I sell food. And uh, that's why I'm fat. Uh, but um, everybody wants me to eat their food, so I do. And so uh, I was running late. I, and I said, oh, I need an iced tea so bad. And um, I need something to drink. I, didn't, I had water, but it was water. And I wanted an iced tea. So um, I said, all right, I'm going to do it. I was in Pete's Parlor in Alma. I drove down past the, by, the, the interstate, went, past, went underneath the underpass, went down to McDonald's. And uh, got out of my car and started in, looked over. And there's a gentleman sitting there with a, a bicycle, and you could tell he's a homeless guy. But he's sitting there with a bicycle, and he turned and looked at me. He said, hey, could you spare just a few dollars because I, I need something to eat? He said, I'm not asking for any money, for anything to drink, anything like that, just something to eat. I said, you betcha. I said, I'll be right back. So I went in, and I come out, and I had him a meal. I got him a meal and, and uh, handed it to him, and, and, and I, and I could have just left. And, God, I did my thing. I gave him a meal. Give me my star. But the Lord said, talk to him about me. So I said, hey, Earl. Do you, his name was Earl. Where's Earl at? There he is right back here in the booth. His name was Earl. I said, Earl. I said, do you know Jesus? He says, well, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I don't know him personally. I said, well, do you want to know him personally? He said, well, yeah, I would like to. So we right there prayed and he's prayed the sinner's prayer right outside of McDonald's. And I hope to God that he someday, I get to see Earl again. I know I will in heaven if, he's, if he stays true to God. And that's not a pat on my back. That's just saying that we have got to do what God's called us to do. And, and that day was a bad day. And I might even had a, 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 I don't know, I didn't cuss. I don't do that. But I might have had a thought, man, this is just crazy. This is the craziest thing. This is the worst day. I might have had that thought. But God still had a plan. God still had a plan. Anytime you have situations in your life, God still has a plan. He still has things for, that, that's going to happen in your life. I've heard, um, I've always heard you, don't, you never love anyone until you live with them. Anybody want to vouch for that? <laughs> Jessica does. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the truth, Really. I was, uh, I, I thought I loved my wife uh, before we got married. And when I married her, uh, we, we fell deeper in love. I was infatuated with her gorgeous looks. And then we began to build on that. She felt sorry for me, for my looks, and uh, she took me. I, I made a lot of money back then, $3.35 an hour, so y'all just hang in there. It's so much easier to go in reverse and go where you've been before than to go a little further to the unknown. It's so much easier, kids, to turn around and start doing the same things you were doing last year in school if you weren't doing the, all the right things. It's so much easier to go back to those old friends that had you saying things, doing things, thinking things, than it is to be the one that says, I don't do that no more. 
it's so much easier. But it's so much more rewarding when you just continue, continue to look to God. And I promise you there'll be a day somebody comes to you and they'll say, can you pray with me? God wants us to look to him and push forward through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because at one time or another in your life, you'll perceive all three. There's always some good. There's always some bad. There's always some ugly. When we get a check in the mail that we don't expect, stimulus check, hello. Sorry. Uh, that might not have been the good. That might have been the ugly. Uh, God wants you to know that uh, he's there with you. When you, when, you, uh, when you get healed, that's a good. Uh, when someone brags on you, I love to hear people brag on other people, me too, but other people more than that. But sometimes that check don't come in the mail. Sometimes we get terminally ill, sick. Sometimes we just get sick. I've got a friend that right now that I've been praying for, and we've been our whole, uh, our, our whole district. We've got some really great guys in our district that I work for, and, and uh, we pray for uh, our friend in, uh, well, I won't tell you where it's at, but anyway, he's, he's come down with COVID, and he's, been, he's not been on a vent, but he's been on oxygen. Uh, he's down to 80% oxygen now, so he's doing a lot better, praise the Lord, and we believe he's going to come out of it. But that's something he never expected. That's something that uh, he didn't know was going to happen. But through it all, in Psalms 46, God is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in trouble. I don't know where else I would want to go. I don't know who else I'd want to look at for my, to get my problem solved. If, if I had to worry about, um, man, I loved what you said, uh, Travis, that uh, the, the Christians are the only one, only one that have a God that will reach down to us and grab us. That is amazing. A lot of, of, of our problem is that uh, not just new Christians, but as Christians that's been in, I'm 53 years old. I've been in church all my life. Eight years old, I gave my heart to the Lord. Straight away a few times. And God's always brought me back. But there's a lot, a lot to be said that you've been in the way for a long time. Well, sometimes you've got to get out of the way and let the Lord do what he's supposed to do. But we forget how to live by faith which everybody knows what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The assurance of things that we need, divinely guaranteed things that God said he would give us and the endurance of things not seen, which is the reality of life. Life and reality. We caught up in loving him, what loving him looks like rather than what loving him really is. Loving him is not playing the drums. Loving him is not up here before a scary crowd giving your testimony, kids. Loving him is not preaching a message. Loving him is loving you and loving them. We all have to have communication with him to be able to love him. The worst thing I ever heard in my life, I told someone I loved him. And they told me, said, you have a funny way of showing it. That's the worst thing that I've ever heard in my life. At that point, I realized I, 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 maybe I had the thought of loving them. And I, uh, I knew what love looked like. And I was doing what love looked like. But I wasn't actually loving Let's don't do that. Let's don't show people what we think they want to see. Let's show them what he wants them to see and go move on from there. We all have the same job. That's the prayer, communion, and talk and listen. Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? Three times. First time he said, feed my limbs. That's give spiritual food for them to live by. And this is my my thought of this. The second one was shepherd my sheep. Teach them by guiding them. Shepherd them. The third time he said, feed my sheep. 
Give them a deeper walk and a deeper teaching spiritually daily. Show them more and more every single day what they need in their life. I used to think that we needed to know the Bible to say when someone approaches us, we need to know what scripture to spout off. That's not it right at all. Sometimes God gives us scriptures. Sometimes he gives us life. Sometimes he gives us things to say. Sometimes he gives us uh, uh, something that you read the day before. But more than that, he gives you what you need at that moment. And it may not even have a word of scripture in it. That's why we read the word. That's why we pray. That's why we commute. Is so we know when to say what to say. Not just what to say. Being close to Jesus has nothing to do with your occupation, your obligation, or how much you do your obligation or your occupation, but everything to do with what is being done inside of you that comes out to help those that are around you. So you got to live it, you got to love it, and you got to do it. Faith first. I asked Jesus one time, and I'm about to finish. I asked Jesus one time, I said, <clears throat> how do I know you're hearing me? How do I know that you're, uh, you're doing, that you, that you know what I'm saying? And, and if I ever heard the Lord in my life, I heard him say, you got to have faith. And every time I prayed, I prayed. I said, God, I said, let me know that you hear me. I need something in my heart that I feel, I see, that you're hearing me. It's all about faith. We know that. But I know that when I pray through, when I pray through the Spirit, and when I pray in and I see, I'm able to see in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit, I'm able to see Jesus Christ stand up beside the Father. It's a reverence thing. It's an horrible thing. I'm not saying any of you can see it. I don't, I'm saying you need to see it. But I see God. I see Jesus in my, when I pray. And if there's times to where I pray and I don't see Jesus, I've not made it through. I need to keep praying. I need to keep pushing through. So what's next? First of all, we move forward and never look back. Second of all, we've got to get to know him. Third, we've got we to live by faith. And then prayer, communion, talking to him and listening more. And fifth, live it, love it, and do it. Sometimes I think we think we're, we're better than some of the apostles. And the apostles uh, went through a lot. Any of you know, I mean, you probably can't quote everything that happened to all the apostles. But we're not guaranteed an easy life in this life. We're not guaranteed that everything's going to be perfect and, and fine. And, and you're going to go through things, I promise. Uh, I've, talk, I've talked to many of us here in the service and know that everybody's went through. Good grief, little Huck got, just got some stitches. He went through something over there. Sometimes we cause our, our own problems. But I want, to, I want to tell you how the apostles, some of the apostles, all the apostles died. Matthew, he suffered mar martyrdom. I always look at Shirley because I know she's an English girl. Yeah, that. He was a martyr in Ethiopia, killed by a sword wound. Mark died in Alexandria, Egypt, after being dragged by horses through the streets until he was dead. Luke, Luke, not Luke, Luke was hung in Greece as a result of tremendous preaching to the lost. John faced martyrdom when he was bulled in huge basin of boiling oil during a wave of persecution in Rome. However, he was miraculously delivered from death. John was then sentenced to the mines of the prison island of Patmos. He wrote his prophetic book of Revelation on Patmos. The apostle John was later freed and returned to serve as bishop of Edessa to, in modern Turkey. He died as an old man, the only apostle to die peacefully. Peter, he was crucified upside down on an egg-shaped cross. According to the church tradition, it was because he told the tormentors that he felt unworthy to die in the same way that Jesus Christ had died. James, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, was thrown over 100 feet down from the southeast pinnacle of the temple when he refused to deny, to, to deny his faith in Christ. When they discovered that he'd survived the fall, his, en his enemies beat James to death with a fuller's club. 
James, the son of Zebedee, was a fisherman by trade, which Jesus called him to a lifetime of ministry. As a strong leader of the church, James was beheaded at Jerusalem. The Roman officer who guarded James watched amazed as James defended his faith at his trial. Later, the officer walked beside James to the place of execution. Overcome by conviction, he declared his new faith to be to the judge and knelt beside James to accept beheading as a Christian. Bartholomew, Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, was a missionary to Asia. He witnessed for our Lord in present-day Turkey. He was martyred for his preaching where he was flayed to death by a whip. Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross in Greece after being whipped severely by seven soldiers. They tied his body to the cross with cords to prolong his agony. His followers reported that when he was led toward the cross, Andrew saluted it in these words, I have long desired and expected this happy hour. The cross has been consecrated by the body of Christ hanging on it. He continued to preach to his tormentors for two days until he expired. Thomas was stabbed with a spear in India during one of his missionary trips to establish the church in a subcontinent. Continent. Jude was killed with arrows when he refused to, not, to deny Christ, his faith in Christ. Matthias, the apostle chosen to replace the traitor Judas Iscariot, was stoned and then beheaded. And then Paul was tortured and then beheaded by the evil emperor in Rome. Paul endured a lengthy imprisonment, which allowed him to write his many epistles to the church he had formed throughout the Roman Empire. These letters, which taught many of the foundational doctrines of Christianity, form a large portion of the New Testament. So, what have we went through? What are we going through today? What are we going to cry about tonight when we get home? Now listen, I don't, I don't want to uh, one time say that your problems aren't, aren't problems. They are. Today's problems are, are just as, uh, uh, we don't have people beheading people in this country today that I know of, not much. Maybe some, not for Christianity. We have, we have issues, but we don't have what a lot of the old timers had. Not even my father. My father even told me stories of, of his father getting thrown uh, uh, rotten eggs and, and all kinds of things thrown at preachers while they stand up or st- stood up on the platform and preached, preached the word. We don't see preachers preaching in the streets anymore. We don't see that. I know the day and time is different. I know everything's different. And I know churches have seen some, some really bad stuff go on in their churches. I get it. Preachers, uh, people being uh, killed by gunmen, all of this. I, I know all of those things have happened. We don't have any troubles. We don't have the troubles that should set us aside to the, and, and knock us backwards and do things to us that, that is going to be uh, uh, something that's not going to keep us going forward. So tonight, I want you to remember that we do raise a hallelujah through our problems. We do, do that, we do that, but then we got to move forward. We've got to allow God to be, don't be the squirrel. Don't go two-thirds of the way and then quit and turn around and go the other way because you're not going to make it if you do. You have a very slim chance that you're going to make it if you turn around and go the other way to even get back to God. Don't be the squirrel. Go all the way across. Love Jesus from day one and just keep going. God bless you. I love you all. Thank you so much. Brent. Thank you, Brother Orville. What an amazing word uh, just to remind us to stay ready and not to be the squirrel. Thank you for introducing us to the squirrel. And uh, there for a moment, I thought that was Earl himself singing. Um, but it's so true, and, and here lately, God's, and I've said it many times in Elevate, God's reminded me of something he laid on my heart years ago, but if we always do what we always done, we'll always be where we've always been. So if we were the squirrel, you run halfway across, come back, you're always going to end up where you were. Somebody needs you to stand up and say, watch me walk. Watch me go forward. 
Watch me move forward. Even though I can't see what's on the other side, clearly, God, I'm moving in faith in you. So churches, stay ready. Stay ready, God. Look for the opportunities where God's calling you. What an amazing story of you and Earl outside of McDonald's over some food. You know, over a meal, what God did. Change, potentially change the guy's life for eternity. And uh, just be, be ready. Be obedient to God's voice. And, um, man, let's just be the church. Let's be love. Let's be what God has called us and asked us to be. Amen? Amen. Y'all ready to, get, to take on the week? Y'all good? Y'all energized, pumped up, rejuvenated? Well, let me pray over you. Let me pray over you real quick, and we will dismiss. Thank you again, Orville. Can we give it up for Orville one more time? Thank you, brother. <laughs> Amazing work, Father God. We thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for today and what you've done in our hearts and our lives, Lord. Help us just to be ready because life is not always a bed of roses, but God, help us to be ready to press on, to press through, to break through. Because, God, we know you will walk with us hand in hand. Even though we can't feel you, even when we can't see you, God, you're moving and you're working in us. Lord, help us to go out and be your hands and feet extended. Help us to be the church that you have called covenant to be, Father God. Thank you for these two amazing messages we've heard today. God, help us not to just hear it and just leave it here. But, God, help us to uh, just take it in as a seed to be planted in us and to grow and bring forth the harvest, Father God. We're just believing for great and mighty things. Father God, we pray over Pastor and the family this uh, for tomorrow, Father God, in this upcoming procedure. Father God, lead and guide the surgeons. God, give them wisdom above and beyond what they already know, Father God. But God, we're more than that, we're believing for a miracle to take place. And Lord, help us just to be a church that prays for their shepherd, Father God, tomorrow morning at 1030. Help us to be that. And uh, Lord, help us just to be ready for whatever life may bring. And uh, help us to walk in the fullness of your armor, God, the full armor of God. Help us to walk in that, Father God. As we go and leave these uh, four walls, God, and step into our mission field, help us to look for the, the people that you want us to speak to, Lord. God, have your will and way in each and every one of us. We thank you once again for tonight, Father God. And we love you and praise you and ask on the precious name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Have a great week, Covenant Church. We love you.